just how large is it possible for a wave to get? Today we're going to find out. These are the top 5 largest physically possible waves. Number 5. Tsunamis Tsunamis are giant waves that are caused by some sort of environmental occurrence. Most commonly, tsunamis are caused by underwater earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs underwater, its energy surges to the surface, causing a massive wave. But tsunamis can also be caused by landslides or glacier caving. Tsunamis can reach massive heights, are highly destructive, and are often found in the Pacific Ocean, although there have been reports of tsunamis worldwide. The largest tsunami ever recorded happened at Latura Bay in Alaska on July 9, 1958. The tsunami was caused by an earthquake and measured an unbelievable 1,720 feet. Another large and famous tsunami occurred in the Indian Ocean on December 26, 2004. Again, this tsunami was caused by an underwater earthquake, and its waves measured as high as 100. The sheer force of the tsunami devastated India, killing more than 230,000 people. But the biggest tsunami of all time was the tsunami that possibly killed the dinosaurs. A massive meteorite landed in the ocean millions of years ago. It caused such a massive tsunami that some historians believe it was one of the reasons that dinosaurs went extinct. The tsunami was an estimated mile high or 5,280 feet high. Number 4. Internal Waves Internal waves are some of the largest waves in the ocean, but you wouldn't know it because unlike surface waves, you can't really see internal waves. Internal waves happen below the surface of the ocean, or internally, in the water. The water in the ocean is made up of different layers. The colder water has more saline than warmer water because the saline does not evaporate. Because colder water has more saline, it's heavier, so it tends to sink below the warmer, lighter water near the surface. Internal waves are caused when something disturbs the interface between these two layers. Any external forces that cause a disruption to the interface can cause an internal wave, but tidal movements are generally the culprit. Once internal waves have formed, they are very similar to surface waves. Internal waves look and move the same as surface waves, the only difference is that you can't really see them. Internal waves can travel really far though, below the surface, and they can get really big. Like large surface waves, internal waves are capable of causing massive destruction. When internal waves collide with a landmass, they can reach remarkable heights. And although these waves can occur anywhere in the ocean, the largest and most consistent internal waves are found in the South China Sea, specifically in the Luzon Strait, where they often measure heights of 550 feet. Number 3. Kelvin Waves A lesser known type of wave are Kelvin Waves. Kelvin waves are named after the man who discovered them, Sir William Thompson, later known as Lord Kelvin. Kelvin waves are very large waves, but they don't look like other types of waves. Kelvin waves occur in the Pacific Ocean. They are an unusual type of wave, and they are not what people think of when people think of waves. This is because Kelvin waves, like tides, are actually gravity-driven. They are not formed by wind or other environmental occurrences. As such, Kelvin waves follow a topographic boundary. The topographic boundary that Kelvin waves follow is either a coastline or the equator. Kelvin waves are non-dispersive, which means that they keep their shape as they move across the ocean. This is why they do not look like the other waves. Kelvin waves do not curl and then crash like the other large counterparts. But like their counterparts, Kelvin waves are very large. They are also extremely long, and they can travel very quickly. In fact, Kelvin waves can reach speeds of 2.8 miles per second there are two types of Kelvin waves, an equatorial. Coastal waves are found in the east, in the northern hemisphere. They use the coastline as their waveguide, hence their name. Equatorial Kelvin waves, on the other hand, use the equator as their waveguides. They move in a counterclockwise direction, in the northern hemisphere oceans. Number 2. Rogue Waves Rogue waves are another type of wave that are physically possible of reaching great heights. Also known as freak waves, monster waves, and killer waves, rogue waves pose a specific danger to ships. Rogue waves can get so big that even larger ships, like ocean liners and cruise ships, are threatened by these waves. Rogue waves are often sporadic and can appear with little to no warning. They are most commonly caused by storms and strong winds. They can also be caused by currents when a strong current runs against the direction of the wave. 
Rogue waves can occur on their own or can travel in a packet of waves, where there may be several rogue waves present. There are actually three types or categories of rogue waves. Walls of water is used to describe a rogue wave that travels fast at speeds of up to six miles across the surface of the ocean. Three sisters is the name given to the rogue waves that occur in groups of three. And finally, a storm wave is used to indicate a wave that is four times the size of other waves caused by the storm. Storm waves swell quickly and then collapse in seconds. And although rogue waves can occur anywhere there is a significant body of water, the largest rogue waves usually happen in the North Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean. The largest rogue wave ever recorded happened in the North Sea on New Year's Eve in 1995. The rogue wave, which was 84 feet high, struck the Dropner Oil Platform. That rogue wave holds the Guinness title of the world's largest recorded rogue wave. Although there are likely rogue waves that have been much higher, they just haven't been officially measured. Number 1. Tides Tides are not only waves, they are actually the largest waves in the world. They are so big that they cause sea levels to rise and fall across shorelines everywhere in the world. Tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, but the size of the tides is dependent on where the sun and moon are in relation to the Earth's oceans. As the Earth rotates on its axis, both the moon and the sun pull the ocean. The oceans are pulled at the same time from both sides of the planet. The gravitational pulling causes the oceans to swell. This is known as high tide. However, because the moon is closer to the Earth than the sun, its gravitational pull is a lot stronger than the sun's. So it has a lot more power, pull, and influence when it comes to tides. Although high tides are the most common and most well-known type of tides, there are two other types of tides. Some tides are smaller than usual. These are called neap tides. Neap tides happen when the sun is at an angle that allows its gravitational force to pull from the moon. Essentially, the two gravitational forces of the sun and the moon cancel each other out, creating a smaller than usual tide, or a neap tide. And where some tides are smaller than usual, some tides are actually larger than others. The strongest and largest type of tide is spring tide. Spring tides occur when the sun and moon are in line with each other, essentially doubling up their gravitational pull. Spring tides happen when the sun and moon line up with the sun and the earth. It can be when the moon is out on the same side as the sun or when the moon is on the opposite side as the sun. In either case, the sun, the moon, and the earth are in alignment and their gravitational pulls create spring tides. Spring tides are the largest waves in the world. Because tides are so large, their movements are tracked. Tides are tracked using shore-based water level gauges. These gauges allow countries all over the world to track, predict, and release information to the public about when tides will be high or low. The level of tides varies widely around the world, but the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Canada has the widest tidal range on the planet, ranging anywhere from 11 to 53 feet. Before we close out today's video, we have a couple honorable mentions that didn't make the list. Honorable mention. Two other types of waves that didn't make the list are plunging waves and surging waves. And although these two types of waves cannot reach the heights of other waves on this list, they can pose significant problems for beach enthusiasts. Plunging waves are caused when waves pass over an incline on the ocean floor. The incline causes the crest of the wave to curl and trap air under it. Then when the wave reaches the shore, the trapped air sort of explodes, causing a plunging wave. These waves can travel very quickly and are common when offshore winds are present. Because they can come up so quickly, and because they are traveling so fast and with significant force, they can be dangerous to both people on the beach and surfers. Surging waves, on the other hand, don't crash into the shoreline like plunging waves, but they pose their own unique threat. Surging waves are formed when large swells collide with a steep shoreline. Surging waves don't have a crest, and so they don't break when they hit the shore. This can cause them to appear harmless. However, they are fast and powerful, and they have very strong backwash. When they recede, they pull back very quickly, which can be dangerous to anyone caught in their backwash. 